How wonderful it is to know that we have one Savior. It's even better to know that He is alive. It's not a, a Christ hanging on a cross. It's a Christ is alive. Speak with us. To visit our heart. To love us. To sustain us. That attract us. That transform us. That cure and deliver us. This is our Savior. About which we're going to speak tonight. I'd like to um, greet the whole church with the peace of the Lord Jesus, the brethren, and all, all those who are visiting us tonight. I invite you to stand up this instant for the reading of the Word of the Lord. We're going to open it up, the first book of Samuel 1. For Samuel in the Old Testament, chapter 22. First Samuel 22, chapter 22, and you will read only verse, only verse, verse one, verse number two, only verse two. And the Bible tells us, first book of Samuel, chapter 22, verse 10. And every man, and everyone who was distressed, everyone who was in debt, and everyone who was dis discontented gathered to him. So he became captain over them, and there were about 400 men with him. Lord, we pray that you bless this message. There is only one purpose, which is our salvation, salvation of men that you call to us this moment for an agreement, for a change of life, to live eternally with you. Lord, operate tonight through this word. We pray to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. My beloved, my friends and brethren, in fact, on Sundays, I always try to speak to the people that visit us. No, no, that, no, it doesn't mean that I don't have the brethren with high regard, but the Lord has established for us on Sunday night to have uh, an opportunity to have people visiting us. Many of them may have not have um, had uh, experience with God. Even though they may speak about God, they they may use the expression, God help me, God sustain me, but they may still have not had an experience with God. And tonight here in Pompano, it's not going to be different. Because there are people here that are with us here that are not part of this church. They're only here because they like the songs and the church sings, the Savior leaves, or when they see the, the children singing. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. It brings man to the source of, of fountain of eternal life. It's not the Church of Pompano, but it's the Lord Jesus. He is our unending fountain of life because He is the one who gives life and He is life. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So tonight, as we were praying before the service began for this meeting tonight, the Lord gave us a sign showing what He wanted to be brought tonight for to our knowledge, for the edification of the church, and for the knowledge of those that I as already has already mentioned. Those that didn't have an experience with God, and the Lord has shown a vision. A man. A man. This man would come to the church, very well dressed. Um, it, his face was showing um, even a little bit of happiness. And there was a detail with him. 
he was brought, bringing him with him uh, uh, garbage can on wheels. And I was asking, Lord, what this, is this? And the Lord answered me, this is the situation of humanity tonight, today. They have on their face um, happiness, but inside of them, this happiness doesn't exist. It was an exterior happiness that uh, after the first obstacle, after difficulty, after the first trial they go through, they go desperate, and many of them even take their own life away. So I pleaded to the Lord and asked, Lord, what do you have for us tonight, for your church here in Pompano, for those that are going to be here? And the Lord has promised me in the time of the kings of Israel, the people of God called the people of Israel have always been governed. There were kings back then. The nations that were around him around them they also had their kings kings that were went ahead of them in the battles that were respected and many times they were honored but not always but they were kings that represented those nations doing war and the people of israel didn't have a king the king what they had was a prophet but the lord but the lord had uh, reason a man to uh, guide his people his name was called Samuel from his infancy was prepared to guide the people to the presence of God and what happened with the people of Israel was that whenever there was a necessity a trial a war Samuel was a representative of God in the presence of man who go to God and say what will we do and God would give all the instruction to the people, for, to Israel. And when the people followed the instruction of God, the people was victorious in battle. And that's how things happened. And that's how we worked and with the people of God. But the fact that the neighboring nations, having their king, led men also of Israel to desire to have a king. We also want to have a king. We want a king ahead of us. Uh, the Ammonites have kings. Every, every other nation have kings. We don't have, but and we want one, want a king. So then they went to Samuel and said, we want a king, so let us elect a king. So then Samuel asked, why do you want a king? Oh, God is our king. Our Lord is our King. What, what we, we need, I speak. What do you need? I speak with Him, and He give us instruction. We, you, we are victorious. But they said, No, we want a king because the other nations have kings. So Samuel was very upset, and he went to speak with God. Look at the situation, and then God said, Don't worry about it. The people is not rejecting you; they're rejecting me, who I am the King. So then raise a king so so then uh, a king called Saul was raised so then the people chose Saul as, as their king I know the heart of, of the people because God knows our heart so then he said I know their heart and so let, let us raise Saul as a king but tell to them uh, in front of the whole nation how it's going to be with the king that they want and that's how it happened so then that king king Saul was uh, a source of sadness and affliction for the people of Israel and uh, facing with the situation the people was going through a very uh, hard time and the king besides being a king that would bring sadness to the church to the nation also was also a king that didn't please the Lord because he was disobedient there's nothing that displeases God more than the sin of disobedience. It was a sin of disobedience that led men to, to the fall because he disobeyed. So then Saul was, was disobedient. And the Lord even withstood Saul for a while. But then came a time when God told Samuel, Samuel, go to the house of Jesse. He has 
many children and I want to raise another king to Israel according to my own heart, according to my own will, then my people will have a, a, a good king. So then Samuel went to the house of Jesse. All the, Jesse's children went b before him. And and then he, Samuel said, oh, maybe this one, the older and strong one. Then God said, no, no, you look to men, but I look to their hearts. It's not this one. So then the youngest, the smallest, was the youngest, was on the field, taking care of uh, sheep. So then God appointed David. And from that point forward, my brethren, when David was anointed to be the substitute of Saul, then it became the great persecution of, of David by Saul. It was because Saul heard that David was a man according to the heart of God. So then that trial began and that persecution began. And what did David, David do? David conclaimed uh, people to be with him, to prepare him to take over the kingdom at that time. So that's the text that we just read here. And then and everyone who was distressed, what, who David called to be his army? Who did he conclaim? Who did he call to be with him? So that then he could become a king. He called every man uh, that were in distress, men that were in great difficulty, affliction, the man was, was upset and saddened and bitter, and David became their uh, leader. And this story that I'm bringing here, not only for the church here tonight to know this story, I bring this story tonight, a revelation, a direction from the Lord, because we're going to leave the time of David and Saul, and now we come to the year 2018. What is happening today? Is there here someone in difficulty? There's someone is pleased with the situation of the world? Is there a family that is uh, suffering? Is there a father is suffering because of his son? Or a daughter? Is there a child that is suffering because of their parent? What is our answer? Without saying, just about, uh, we need to just shake our head showing that we agree that the world is like this the family is destroyed society is rotten and at this moment uh, now we're going to Matthew chapter 11 when we hear an invitation of the Lord Jesus Son of God the one that save and cure transform operate wonders and change men and turn man to a being that is pleasing to him. So David said, Come upon me, all the ones that are tired and oppressed, and I will relieve you. Take upon my yoke, because I learn from you, because I uh, suffer hard, because my yoke is light and my. And it's light. This is the plea of the Lord tonight. He is the King, He is our King, He is the Son of God. He died on the cross for us. He paid a, a, a high price to have us beside Him and bring us to the eternity. This is a moment of affliction which humanity is going through. It's a moment of anguish that is happening inside of our homes, our families. We don't even know what to do. The parents lost control of their children. The children lost respect to their parents. Affliction, anguish, suicide, parents killing children, children killing parents, mother killing children, children killing mothers. That's what's happening. Suicide, mass killings. That's what the, the world is living in today. The world lives in a convulsion of sadness, of affliction, and bitterness. Is there a solution? Is it possible that there is still hope? Yes, there is, and this hope is called Jesus, the Son of God. And tonight, He's calling you 
because you are suffering, because you are displeased, because you are sad, because you are bitter. Come to me and I will give you relief and allow you to rest. And I will I'll show you the glory of God, I will show my glory. And last night we were, we were in the church of Hallandale and the Lord said, I'm going to show tonight in this church my glory. And you brethren have no idea what happened in Hallandale. The Lord operated great wonders. My glory, the glory of the Lord, come upon me. Chapter 11, Matthew. The Lord Jesus is calling to men to meet him, to receive him, to accept him, to place in his heart. You have peace and life and, and eternal life. Jesus is calling. Where are you going to right now? You see, the Lord has shown this man that represents clearly the behavior of society today. Is everything all right? Yes, everything is fine. How good it is. Yes, everything is fine. When the, you turn that back, oh, that man killed himself. And, and, wow, wasn't it everything so fine? They just say that it was fine because they don't want to say that everything is bad and that's what the Lord has shown today that this, this man is a symbol of man, man in our society today they have appearance of peace but inside they have sadness war anguish bitterness there are things that sadden men that turn men inside out that destroy family that destroy children that destroy the adult that perverts the youth and that's what is happening today, but the call of the Lord, Jesus is come up upon me, all of those that were tired and oppressed and overloaded of pain and sadness, and, and I will give you a relief. That's the message today for the chaotic world that we are living in. Everywhere, whatever you go, wars, rumors of wars, infirmity, cancer, killing humanity, and people living many times alienated, not paying attention to the call of Jesus. He calls us tonight. One day he called me and I answered to his call. Today I glorify his name. And you can have the same experience because the same God that one day called me is the God who is here tonight that calls you and loves you and wants to see you living a life of peace, a true peace in his presence. The call is this come upon me. All of those who are sad, afflicted, and bitter. Don't complain about life. Come to Jesus and you'll find true peace. Because Jesus said, I am your peace. I'll give my peace. I'm not give you like the world gives. Believe in me. The Lord Jesus is the only and true peace. He can give man rest and security. Blessed be your name. Let's praise the name of the Lord. Bless your name.
Are you sad? The sadness is choking. Let Jesus resolve it. Lord Jesus, come take over my life. Resolve, Jesus. You have problems in the house and family. Let the Lord resolve. Go to Him. Come upon me, all of those who are tired and oppressed and overloaded. Come upon me. And I will give you relief. Who said this? Is the one that can give you relief. It was not a pastor who said this, or a famous pastor. No, it was Jesus. Jesus, the only one who died on the cross for us and made us his servant, serve him, and to live with him one day forever in eternity without sadness, without anguish, without affliction, without being overloaded. You just need to allow the Lord to take over. Let us stand up. Lord to God. Go to your name. We praise the Lord. I speak with Him and say, Lord, resolve my cause. I don't have uh, any other way out. Resolve, Lord, help us. Lord, Father, we are eternally thankful because of this service, because everything that you have done here tonight, for the songs that we sang, for the prayers that we said, and because of the, your word that speaks so clearly to our heart. We ask, Lord, that it may cause the, the effect desired by you so that the day in which you are coming come, may come fast. Receive the gratitude of a people, our gratitude that flows from a redeemed soul. We pray to you in the name of Jesus. In your name we say, the wonderful grace of your Son, Jesus, the love of the Father, the uh, Cannot, that love cannot be measured, and the consolation of the Spirit be upon your people, upon those that have given their lives to your Son, now and forever. Amen. I'm not going to ask the church to sit down for a, a few minutes. I'm going to ask the church also an instant of reverence and fellowship. I want the, the brethren, instead of talking to one another, I just want you to pray. Remain praying because the deacons and archers here are here. They're going to give assistance to those that are in need. And when when they go to pray, the Holy Spirit is going to operate. And the Holy Spirit operates in the reverence and the fellowship. So it's going to be quick. While the brethren are assisting the people there, if there is someone that needs a prayer and assistance, a brethren. The archers and deacons are not going to preach. They're just going to pray for you. If you desire, they're here at your disposal. The church in fellowship. Okay. okay. We're going to 
go away and we'll be blessed by the Lord.